Welcome to this edition of Take 5. Today I have as my guest Pavel Efremkin. Pavel is the CEO of Aerolays, and Aerolays is a company which offers many devices. They're well known in our space, and I'm sure they, just like us, have to adjust to this COVID period of time. Pavel, welcome to the program. Thank you, Steve. I missed, you know, meeting you and uh, have our discussions at uh, trade shows. Unfortunately, we don't have much now, but at least, you know, now through video, we can reconnect. Well, our viewers and listeners want to hear a little bit about how Aerolays is going to adapt to the market. So your question number one is, how has COVID changed Aerolays? No, actually, uh, Steve, you know, COVID didn't really uh, change Aerolays much because it didn't change, uh, require to change our strategy. Because our product development and our products, to some degree, you know, became even more competitive and more important in the COVID crisis. So our uniquely portable and versatile lasers were already in high demand before COVID. And we grew uh, 71% uh, in 2019 compared with 2018. So with this strong momentum, we actually even finished <laughs> Q1 of 2020 growing 11% up. And this momentum allowed us actually to uh, keep all our team. So uh, we didn't lay off anybody. And um, we also even continue hiring. You're hiring so, in the midst of this COVID crisis when most companies are laying off, you're hiring. So then you must have some cash on hand. The company must be doing pretty well. Yes, but uh, most importantly, while our uh, sales, of course, you know, slowed down because of COVID, but our customers, they do not cancel the orders. Really, our product, you know, is very important for them and allow them to actually uh, achieve very high ROI, you know, uh, because, you know, uh, growing revenues today on a lower patient volume it's, you know, what really is the biggest challenge. So we also, you know, sell in the U.S., but also worldwide. So, so we're, are you seeing a difference in, in Asia right now? Are they back up to where they were before or close to it? We actually not as much selling like in China. We sell in Philippines. We sell in Kuwait, uh, Middle East. You know, those Lebanon... Uh, those markets actually very continue to be very active. They are on a lockdown, but the practice is working to some degree, like almost like in a regular way, at least what we, you know, hear from our customers. Also, um, we were able to see, you know, sales and uh, new customers in the U.S. Uh, because, you know, we... are still buying even though they're not seeing patients. Yes, because, you know, many of them, you know, preparing uh, for the opening and because of uh, advantages of our technology, and as I said, it's a versatility, the uh, product allows, uh, the same laser allows to treat important medical conditions like acne psoriasis, which is reimbursable, anicomycosis, but also a full set of aesthetic treatments you know, those who are open in new practices, they really, they already thought about it. Mostly it's those people who already made their decision before. So they your just, devices, remind me, Pavel, are a little bit less expensive than some of the larger capital equipment companies sell their devices at, right? So actually, you know, on a one-to-one -one basis, they are the same, similar priced. Ah. What allows to save money is that our laser provide high efficacy and safety range of treatments, which require four distinct, you know, uh, separate devices from uh, traditional manufacturers. And your so boxes that, are smaller too, right? Aren't they? Your devices are a little bit smaller? Yes, yeah, so it's a 25 pound portable device. And uh, for example, we have an interesting, you know, there is a new customer, uh, they just, are opening a new, uh, like a building, a new practice, and they will have um, uh, two floors. One floor will be medical, and another is aesthetic. So if you're, uh, if you're a young person opening a practice, and you have both med, derm, and aesthetics, one of your devices may be particularly suited for such a practice. 
do you think, and this is question number two, do you think in the future, doctors will spend a lot of money for capital equipment? Do you think they'll spend the 100,000 plus dollars to buy a big device, especially if they're just an aesthetic practice? Look, you know, it depends what you're buying. We always say to our customers, you are not buying a Bentley, you are not buying a, you know, antique car, you know, it's not something where you spend money. You actually invest in into a technology which will allow you to make 10 times more than you invested. And you mentioned like uh, uh, young dermatologist new practices. One of the, you know, uh, very, very good and now known young dermatologist, uh, she purchased, let's say, laser, I think in um, uh, August of 2018. In September, like within 30 days, she sent us an email saying that she made first 25,000 with the laser. Okay, but so, you, gotta, you gotta agree that in this post-COVID period of time, doctors are gonna be a little bit different. They don't have the reserves of cash that they did prior to COVID, and they may not want to spend the money that they did in the past. Or, or are you not seeing that at all? Do you not, do you not think that's true? I think that, look, you know, again, doctors, you know, with our technology, they see what they're getting with it. If you are getting the device, right, even if it costs 115000 right, but, you know, it allows you to do all medical laser treatments, at a high efficacy and safety, and also full set of aesthetic treatments. And if you can make, you know, some champions, you know, make without technology, and I'm serious, you know, they're champions, you know, up to 100,000 a month, which is ridiculous. But normally, let's say 25,000, look, it is, you know, um, it's not, that, uh, from my point of view, there is many costs in buying lasers. For example, service contracts, consumables. It's what really takes, you know, from each treatment you do, you pay. Aerolase has no consumables, no service contracts. And, you know, even our, you know, if anything happened with the laser, it's like no touch service. UPS comes to your practice, picks the device, in one or two days it's here, and in a few days it's back. Okay, so this question number three, since your device is so versatile, do you think the aesthetic market's gonna change? And do you think the patients wanting aesthetic treatments are gonna change? So look, you know, there is a big change, you know, where we live now. Particularly, you know, it's uh, our concern on safety. So now we're afraid to touch anything. Like, you know, we're afraid to touch push button and elevator the bench, you know, in the park, you know, this will be for years. It's a psychological fear. So, um, by the way, our technology also, you know, and this is how we are trying to drive the patients back to our practices. Aerolase doesn't touch the skin during treatment. We don't blow even cold air on the skin, you know, because we don't need to mask the pain. It's a pain-free technology. So, we introduced this no touch aerolase campaign because look, you know, of course, medical practice is highly professional. Everything is safe there. There is no doubt. But the fear, it's a psychological fear. You know, in our building, you know, they clean this uh, elevators, you know, every day, <laughs> still people are afraid to touch. No We're touch. learning a lot about COVID. There's a lot of things we don't know, and I understand that there's a lot of fear also. Some of it may be unfounded, but you're right. And a laser device that doesn't have a plume, a laser device that doesn't spread particles may be advantageous in a post-COVID period of time. Number, question number four, will you, as an Aerolase CEO, will you do anything to stimulate the market? Will you help the doctors who have an Aerolase device? Yes, actually we do it in uh, four areas. So we try to help them to get, you know, more revenues on a lower volume of patients. One, I already mentioned this campaign, No Touch Aerolase, and we're helping them to introduce to their website, working with social media, etc. Also, we recommend our practices to concentrate on the medical applications like acne and psoriasis, because those patients are devoted. The, psychologically, they were first will be getting back to the practice because they need, you know, to be 
improved. And also some of them concern about like, you know, using drugs at this time because of the, it's not the time to be immunodepressant. A third, what we are helping our customers, you know, those who wants to buy a new technology, we offer them no payments until 2021. And in principle, what we really can do, we can deliver and in service them a laser within two weeks. And they can start generating cash all this time on this medical and aesthetic treatments. And we will help them training, you know, we do uh, Zoom training, you know, all these, you know, remote options. But in fact, you know, by providing them the laser right away, right now we have no problem with supply chain, you know, our Cherry Town, you know, manufacturing facility working is great. That's what we have. And the last, what we offer, we offered numerous, you know, uh, webinars by experts in the field on how to uh, open the practice, what to do, you know, we actually invited and sponsored, you know, the best experts in the industry, and all these webinars available on our website for everybody. Okay, so the big advantage here that I'm hearing is that no payments until 2021, so I can have that machine in my office for six months, perhaps, and start generating revenue and not have to pay anything until six months from now. Exactly. Okay, that's a huge advantage. All right, Pablo, your last question, question number five. What do you like least and what do you like best about isolation now that you've been in isolation for six weeks or so? No, actually, you know, I missed, you know, our team. While engineering, you know, manufacturing is working, my other colleagues work from home, so I miss the um, talking to them, the, that buzz in the office. I also missed a lot, you know, our industry events. And uh, look, you know, uh, all these meetings we missed, ADS, LMS, we missed, you know, cosmetic surgery meeting, you know. So all is a big, big loss for our industry because we uh, cannot, we're not able to see our friends, to exchange ideas, and uh, this I'm missing. No, what I like about it, look, you know, I have two grown kids <laughs> and we're happy to have them back with us now. Yeah. So as a result, you know, we have nice evenings, nice dinners, you know, we go in, you know, bicycle trips. It's like, you know, back to the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. great times. All right, so Pablo, it was great talking to you. I appreciate you doing Take 5. It's interesting that your company has been doing very well. You're, you're, not, you're not furloughing, you're not laying people off, you're actually hiring. You're offering us new opportunities by stimulating the market, by giving us no, no payments for the next six months or until 2021. So that's a nice opportunity and lots of webinars and opportunities. And also your device is very versatile. So for those who are still doing medical procedures, they can offer this laser for both. So that's an advantageous too. So I want to thank you, Paolo, for doing this Take 5. And hopefully we'll see you at a trade show sometime soon before the end of this year. Thank you, Steve. And thank you for doing it because it's a really, you know, uh, I think a big, big help for the uh, whole our community to be connected and to share, you know, the best practices and to help each other. Thank you so much. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.